from Microbe TV. This is Beyond the Noise, episode number 54, recorded on February 17th, 2025. I'm Vincent Racaniello, and joining me today is your host, Dr. Paul Offit. Hi, Vincent. This is the video version of Paul's column, which he writes over on Substack called Beyond the Noise, cutting to the chase on important health topics. And today I'd like to take a closer look at Paul's column, Understanding RFK Jr. You know, I thought, Paul, when I saw that title, I said, I don't want to understand anything about him. I want him to just go away. (laughs) But he won't. So tell us what RFK Jr. doesn't believe in that explains a lot of his positions. So what he holds tightly to is the miasma theory. And you can read about this in his book, The Real Anthony Fauci, pages 285 to 288, which is titled Miasma versus Germ Theory. So I'm going to get to the germ theory in a second, but let me tell you what he believes first. He believes in miasmas, which are sort of a Greek to loosely mean poisons, and that the reason that people get sick is because they're exposed to these poisons. In the old days, in like the 1700s in Europe, the belief was that those poisons were rotting organic material that was sitting on the streets, trash that wasn't picked up, and that that would create this sort of bad air, if you will, that people would then inhale and get sick. So so it wasn't contagious. It was just you were all exposed to this environmental poison. So he still believes that. He believes that the environmental poisons are things like pesticides or food dyes or most prominently vaccines. Those are today's miasmata, you know, the, the things that are causing us harm. Now, he doesn't, on the other hand, believe in the germ theory, that specific germs cause specific diseases. And he shows much evidence for that, actually. He, by the way, the germ theory is not not theoretical. It's real, um, yeah. starting with Robert Koch in the 1800s, proving that, that the bacillus the bacillus anthracis caused anthrax. Pasteurization proved that if you killed bacteria, you, could, you wouldn't have spoilage of wine or beer. So this is not theoretical. It's proven. Um, specific viruses and bacteria, for example, cause specific diseases. And if you can treat them or prevent them, you can live longer. Those are life-saving things. And in fact, we lived 40 years longer than we did in the late 1800s. So, so evidence that he doesn't believe in the germ theory is, is several fold. First of all, um, when he went to Samoa, in like around 1918, I'm sorry, 2018, 2019, um, he was, it was right at the beginning of an outbreak of measles. Here you'd had um, immunization rates had dropped from 70% to 30%. There was the beginning of an outbreak that ultimately caused 5,600 people to get measles and 83 to die, mostly children less than four years of age. So he didn't believe the virus caused it because he doesn't believe in the germ theory. So he wrote a letter to the prime minister at Samoa and said, this isn't caused by measles. It's caused by the measles vaccine, because that to him was the miasma. The miasma was the measles vaccine. That's what was causing it. Similarly, with regard to the Spanish flu pandemic in 1918, he said that wasn't caused by by a virus. It was caused by the flu vaccine, which interestingly wasn't invented for another 30 years. But That's what he said. So he believes this. He's very consistent. And I don't think people realize this. He's a devotee of the miasma theory and doesn't believe in the germ theory. Therefore, he thinks no vaccine is beneficial. He thinks that when he sees a child being held by their parent on a hiking trail, he goes up and says, don't vaccinate your child and believes he saved that child because vaccines are, in his mind, a miasma. I see somebody on a hiking trail with a carrying a little baby, and I say, I'm better not get them vaccinated. What does he think all these viruses and bacteria floating around infecting everyone do? They don't do anything? Yeah, he. Do, I mean, I would like to see him go on record to say what is going on in Texas right now. There is growing concern about measles spreading fast in this West Texas community. Confirmed cases of measles, one of the most contagious viruses on the planet, more than doubling here in a single week, from 24 to 49. Where there's been roughly 50 cases of measles that are confirmed, meaning confirmed by either PCR or serology, assume that that's the tip of a bigger iceberg. What does he think is causing these cases? Because that's not what he th- thought caused the Samoa measles outbreak. I wonder whether he's going to make the same case here as he did in a letter he wrote to the Samoan uh, minister, prime minister that, you know, that it was a defective measles vaccine. Will he say the same thing here? 
idea that miasma causes these things is has been disproven over a hundred years ago, not just by Robert Koch, but by multiple scientists in between who have isolated causative agents. It's, you know, he believes it's fine. He can believe whatever he wants, but he's wrong. He's a hack. <laughs> it's crazy. It drives me crazy that he's, oh my gosh, he going to be head of health and human services. And he believes in some outdated idea that doesn't exist anymore. I, I don't understand, Paul. It's frightening. It's it's amazing. It's like you're living in a world turned upside down where everything that you valued isn't valued anymore. I mean, I don't think we should have to reprove that the germ theory is real, but um, I guess we're going to have to convince him. Well, we're, we're the only country in the world who has a guy like him who thinks miasma is the thing. Nobody else believes that. Everybody else gets that they're infectious diseases. So uh, I can't imagine it's going to last forever. And I hope not. I'm with you. He says you don't need vaccines, just boost your immune system. So where are the papers that support that? And and how do you achieve it? So you have a, an, a COVID pandemic arising. How, how do you make people boost their immune systems in, in a timely manner to save their lives? That's what he believes. You just, just eat well, exercise, stay away from highly processed foods, stay away from food dyes, and then you won't get sick. And he said that in the past. He has said healthy people don't die from these diseases because presumably they're, they're in good shape. Uh, that you don't need to worry about giving things like vaccines. Um, similarly, you know, he said he doesn't think HIV causes AIDS that because if he said, if he said he think HIV did cause AIDS, then that would mean he was embracing the germ theory which he doesn't do. Well, <laughs> he needs to do an observational study and tell me that all the people who died of COVID had weak immune systems and didn't eat well or whatever. Good luck with that one, RFK Jr. Right, and when he was in Samoa, he in no way encouraged vaccination, not at all. Um, he encouraged vitamin A, but he didn't encourage vaccination. So what's he gonna do here? I'd like to think he would be a vigorous advocate for vaccinating those under-vaccinated communities like the, the Mennonite community in um, Texas that was the source of this outbreak that has now spilled over to some extent in New Mexico. There are seven states that are reporting measles outbreaks now. I just, this is the disease I fear the most, measles coming back. The problem is you can't, he can't just say, uh, eat well, boost your, your immune system. You need specific guidance, right? You need specific bullet points determined from a clinical trial. So it doesn't work. No, I mean, but FDR was a vigorous, active, healthy, athletic man who was felled by polio. And it wasn't because he needed to boost his immune system. It was because he wasn't immune to polio. And therefore, he got infected with the virus and was paralyzed by it. So you, you write a story about Haemophilus influenzae and how it was controlled by vaccines. Tell us about that. Right, so I trained at the Children's Hospital in Pittsburgh as an intern and resident between 1977 and 1980, and Haemophilus influenza B, that bacteria dominated our lives. I mean, it was a cause of meningitis and bloodstream infections and pneumonia and epiglottitis and cellulitis. And um, we would see, we would always have two, three cases on the floor at the time, primarily meningitis. Um, and then by 1987, there was the first Haemophilus influenza B vaccine. And now you've virtually eliminated the 20 to 25,000 cases of Haemophilus influenza B. And that's not because there was a dramatic increase in sanitation in this country. It was because of the Haemophilus influenza B vaccine. Yeah, I also noticed that he criticizes this multi-trillion dollar pharma industry, right? Yet he himself makes many millions of dollars criticizing vaccines. He apparently can live with his own inconsistencies. That's right. <laughs> uh, he says that uh, Tony Fauci's claim that COVID vaccines saved millions of lives is untrue. It was actually improvements in sanitation. So do, do you know where this paper was published, Paul? I don't. Um, again, he doesn't. He will say that Anthony Fauci will say, have said that, that vaccines have saved millions of lives. And he says in his book, quote, that's just simply not true. It's not true. I mean, you know, I'm a child of the 1950s. You know, the, the time when I was born, there were 30,000 cases of paralysis every year caused by polio and 1,800 deaths. There were 48,000 hospitalizations from measles and 500 deaths. 
Uh, mumps was the most common cause of acquired deafness in the United States. Rubella, when it infected women in the first trimester, gave would give an 85% chance that that child who was then born would be blind, deaf, or have heart defects. I mean, vaccines changed all that. We live 30 years longer because of vaccines, not because of improved sanitation. It's because of vaccines. They have saved their lives, and he does not in any sense appreciate that. Paul, when you write a book, doesn't the fact checker call you up and ask you to validate many of the statements that you make? Yes. The publishers that I choose do that. Yes. I guess he chose publishers that don't do that. That's right. Skyhorse Publishing is what he chooses. And they, they, they publish these kinds of books, these I kind see. of alternative points of view. By the way, so he makes this big deal about sanitation and health and all this. Does he know that improved sanitation actually made polio epidemic? That's exactly right. That's exactly right. And tell me if I'm wrong, because you know this story better than me, but that polio was common. Um, usually you would be, when mothers, uh, when mothers would, would uh, bear their children, they would passively transfer antibodies to those babies who would then be infected early in life with improved sanitation. Then they may not be infected till later in life when those antibodies had worn off and therefore they were uh, at greater risk of disease. So improved sanitation made polio worse. I think that that's my understanding. Yeah, I'm sure he has no clue about that. No clue. Uh, uh, he doesn't read anything as far as I can tell. See, it's okay. He, he's, he's a lawyer. I mean, he's a personal injury lawyer. It doesn't bother me. He doesn't know things. What bothers me <laughs> is things he thinks he knows for sure that just aren't true. He also says AZT was an example of mass murder. Maybe he doesn't know that people dying of age actually clamored for the FDA to approve AZT, right? Right. But that fits into his thing of sort of anything made by a pharmaceutical company is a miasma. AZT, therefore, is a miasma, therefore, is an example of mass murder. If you've seen the movie Dallas Buyers Club. Welcome to the Dallas Buyers Club. You remember that the patients wanted to share the pills, so they split it. And they, that made FDA realize that they could lower the dose and, and get more people treated. Right. I remember, that was Matthew McConaughey. Wasn't that his? Yeah, movie? it was. It was. Yeah. So. This is a man with fringe views, unsupported by any scientific evidence. What is sad to me is that over half of the Senate heard his lies and nonsense, yet still chose to confirm him. This goes beyond science, Paul. It's now the, the politics are overriding the science. Yeah, not a lot of profiles and courage there. Very hard to watch. And, you know, I think five of the Republicans were at, at some level associated with the medical field. So they knew better. I, I know they knew better. And it's just um, it's just hard to watch um, politics trump science, because when you mix politics with science, you always get politics. And that's what's happened here. Well, I think if we have um, outbreaks in states, then like Texas, for example, if this gets bigger, then uh, the representatives and senators are going to have to be accountable because they they're playing into this. Right. I hope so. I actually have written letters to congressmen and senators in the state of Texas and say, this is what's going on. What are you going to do about it? You make a statement at the end of your piece. He is completely unqualified to head health and human services. That's evident. But apparently, um, if this is something the administration wanted, this is something Donald Trump wanted. And so therefore, he gets it and we lose. I mean, people have said to me, like the, the, uh, some reporters will say to me, well, the Republicans won here. No, no, the Republicans didn't win. Measles won. Pertussis yep. won. And the Democrats didn't lose. Children lost. Yes. It's very sad. We've been talking about this for about a year, Paul. Now it's come true. So, all right, we're going to follow it and see what happens. You can read, uh, Paul's columns at Beyond the Noise on St Substack. We'll put a link in the show notes. That's Beyond the Noise with Dr. Paul Offit. Thank you, Paul. Thank you, Vincent.